Well, welcome everybody to another Bloomington North Rotary meeting on this miserably cold day outside, uh, but we're all inside enjoying Zoom. Um, a couple of announcements before we get started. I know we are not able to resume meeting in person at the Tudor Room, so we are starting to look for alternative locations. Hopefully Gabe will be able to give us an announcement before next week. We're hoping to even try and meet in person with the virtual option as early as next Thursday, but we'll keep everybody posted on how that goes based upon if we can find another location. Um, and I'm trying to think if we have any other announcements we need to do before I introduce our guest. Anything you can think of, Joe, our fearless president, or Gabe, our fearless mm -hmm. president? <laughs> I think nothing that I know except just keep posted about possible new meeting locations. All right, well, without any further ado, I would love to introduce today's guest speaker. Today's guest speaker is Marissa Churchill, and she is the Director of Operations for Girls Inc. of Monroe County. And we're, our district has a special uh, relationship with Girls Inc. of Monroe County this year in that we are gonna be doing a district project for Girls Inc. at our district conference, which I believe is coming up in April. So I'll let, um, Marissa, share a little bit more about that with you, as well as tell us how everything's going over at Girls Inc. So welcome, Marissa. We're glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate this. Um, Girls Inc. has been through so many changes just in the last season or so, um, right before the pandemic, and unfortunately had been a been through a pause, just like everybody had to do with the pandemic. But unfortunately, picking back up was a little difficult just because of the leadership changes and some other programming models that were changing. And so the boards just decided to put it on pause and pick up in the different season. And here we are today. They did undergo an acquisition a merger with the Shelbyville Girls Inc., um, which just means Shelbyville is the overall umbrella for Girls Inc. right now, and Monroe County is kind of like the little, little sister underneath that, and they've been such a blessing for the organization just because they know how to do um, the programming model that Monroe County is trying to pick up and practice, and they also have the right type of leadership that we're trying to acquire as well. So Shelbyville is our big sister that we're really, ca really happy to be with right now. Um, but with Girls Inc. in Monroe County, like I said, we have undergone a lot of changes. With that, we're an all-new staff this year. Um, we are a staff of four people that are holding down the fort right now. We have a programming director, um, we have our administration team, and then we also have our fund development team. Also, we can get things up and going once again for everybody. Um, but some new things that we will be doing is that we will be in Clear Creek Elementary School in about two weeks, and we will be doing our first program with the girls there. Um, it's a specific specific group of girls that it's their duolingo um, group that they have. So we're really excited to get to work with them. And then hopefully in the fall, we consider more schools that we can tackle so we can give more programming that way. We also have every Thursday from now until, well, not today because of the weather, but from now until about the spring, we have every Thursday packed with lots of activities for girls in the community to come with their parents and guardians to do. We have the IU Crimsonettes coming next week. It was supposed to be our kickoff today, but they'll be there next week so you can learn some dance moves and play with the pom-poms and get to have all sorts of fun that way. Um, and then we'll also have a spring break camp for following the, Mon the Monroe County School Corporation schedule. Um, that is a part of our magic program. So the girls can learn how to play with fairies and some other magic tricks, and it's gonna be a fun time. And then our big kicker this year is that we're having our summer camp and we're super excited with that just because that's kind of the big thing that Girls Inc. does. And we worked really hard to make sure that we get there this year. So those are some of our programming models that we have for this coming season in the spring and the summer and hopefully in the fall we just keep rolling forward and seeing where this goes with everyone but we're excited to partner with Rotary to see where this goes to help give back to girls in the community to make them feel comfortable with anything that they may need. Let me ask you a couple questions on your camps coming up our um <clears throat> what are your requirements as far as masks or vaccines or anything like that for, for both the kids and or the staff? Definitely. For staff, we're probably going to have all the staff required to have their vaccines um, updated. Um, the primary vaccines, what the CDC calls it, just the two or the one of the J&J &J vaccination, um, but we're probably going to require that. As far as the kiddos, um, we are definitely going to have masks required for everybody. Vaccination status is still up in the air for this summer camp at least, but we will have all masks required still. 
and where do the where do the girls go if they're interested in that? Um, you mentioned the the uh, more um, the cheer kickoff, and I probably got the name wrong there. Next week. Yeah, so we have everything available on our website, but all of the programs will be at our center, which is on 1108 West 8th Street. It's by Fairview Elementary School, so it's over in that area. Um, but everything is on our website. We just have some nice flyers that you can look at, and we also have our Facebook page updated as well. Sorry, I'm looking at your website right now. Go ahead, Gabe. Oh, you're, good. you're muted, Gabe. You're still not talking, Gabe. Oh no. <laughs> He's only the host, you know, technical issues with the host. What's with that? <clears throat> Did you unplug your microphone? Uh, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. So um, how is that space going? It's actually uh, a remarkable environment that you have um, over, over in the Fairview neighborhood. Um, it's got an amazing gym attached to, you know, I know, uh, having taken a tour recently, you have a kitchen space in there, you have, um, a lot going on. How, how has that been maintained through all this? And, and, uh, are you facing any challenges with that? Yeah, definitely. I completely spaced that part, but we actually sold the gym and it is now full house fitness and that's a woman owned gym itself. And so we partner with her for so many things just because she's such an empowering woman to work with uh, but now we just have the one building which is going to be mostly like administrative type stuff and then we're hopefully in the future to have our camps held elsewhere because we unfortunately do have to have a cap for spring break and for summer camp just because the space is a little bit smaller than with not having the gym connected to it but we did do some remodeling we have new furniture we have a new paint job out there on the outside in the inside and we have the little um, kitchenette fixed up as well so we did that all in the fall completely space that i'm so sorry that that was a big no, portion no. Yeah, i just know all this <laughs> and so forgive me if you did answer this but i know that it, if i understand correctly it was an after school opportunity for for kids is that still an option or has that had to change so that's also had to change, unfortunately. It's one of my goals to get our after school programming up and running again, hopefully next spring at the latest, but I definitely wanna see that happen for the community again. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. If you, um, you know, if you could wave a magic wand, I mean, you're talking about getting that up and running again. What, what do you feel like, I mean, so to preface this, you're new to Bloomington. Um, you've been drawn to this. Uh, you mentioned that you enjoy service. Um, if you could wave a magic wand, what programs or what initiatives would you kick off uh, for for what you're dealing with? Goodness, there's so many. Oh my gosh. I really just fangirl about my job. I tell people all the time, like, I really just love my job in general. Um, but there's just so many great things that I want to see Girls Inc happen in the community and I think one of my biggest things right now to get up and going is a period pantry so that's why when I talked to Jessica and she was like what type of collaboration can we do and I was like oh my gosh I have something in mind so a period pantry just so people can have access to personal hygiene products at their will it's kind of like a blessing box that you see for those or like those book boxes that you see or like the pet bless blessing boxes as well but like I said it's just full personal hygiene products that anyone can come get at their will and it's just for the community to have at their will so I'm excited for that are you thinking of that as the same model as the those little houses where they'll actually be these period pantries and little things all around the community then is that what you're anticipating possibly that I think that would be really worthwhile I think just starting at a girls ink level I was just picturing just a little like a little box setting itself or maybe a shed just because I feel like we're going to accumulate a lot of products as it is. Um, but that would be really awesome to see throughout Monroe County. That would make my heart really happy. <laughs> what organizations do you think you want to partner with? I mean, I don't know if you know them already or if you have certain ones you'd love to, but you don't know who does that stuff right now. Yeah, I have been in contact with, um, it's called the Period Project, and that's a national organization. So I've been in contact with them just to figure out, like, how does one get up and going with this? And then we got in contact with the IU, um, it's a part of their help. I, I can't remember the exact title, but basically it's IU students, specifically women that also want to 
spread the word about period education. And so we've been in contact with them to start doing more, they call it pep rallies, period education programs for young ladies to come to the center and learn about menstrual cycles and the upkeep and the care and all that type of jazz. Um, and then we go into detail about, about period pantries and about period poverty in general. So those are the type of people I've been in contact with so far, but as far as making pantries throughout Monroe County, I haven't really thought that much into it yet. Do you think it would benefit to have pantries, for instance, at the junior highs and the high schools? Oh, definitely. Yes. Because do do anything like that already? Um, I'm unsure. I'm not sure what the schools have for programming wise for for that. But I mean, vending machines inside bathrooms for inside like female bathrooms are not worthwhile at all. So I mean, something as a period pantry would definitely be beneficial. And to make it discreet and to make just to destigmatize what it is to have a menstrual cycle, just to make it as discreet as possible, even though it's a shame that we have to make it discreet. But I mean, it makes that embarrassment go away for people. And um, what, what's, I mean, what is your background? You, you came out, you said you came out of um, Terre Haute, but how did you, how did you arrive at your station now? Yeah, so I graduated this past May with a master's in public administration. I went to Indiana State University for my undergrad, which was in recreational therapy and for grad school. Um, like I said, I've always loved service work and I just knew I needed to keep keep going with that as much as possible. And whenever I learned about Girls Inc, I was like, I have to work there. I don't know what this looks like for my future, but I have to work there. And my executive director, she she and I had a great interview together and we both just fell in love with each other and it was just happiness since then. So she took that took that leap of faith with me because of the whole acquisition and, for, and merger with Monroe County. And she was like, I think you can do it. And I was like, okay, I, we will see how this goes. And so here we are now. So I'm very thankful for this opportunity. I'm just thinking of other places to potentially partner with and ways we might be able to give you introductions. And I was thinking um, Boys and Girls Club might be another good good place to have a, a pantry. I really like this concept of the period pantry. I wonder <clears throat> I wonder how much it would cost to actually put one up and how you would restock it and different things like that, because that's something that mm -hmm. I can certainly see different, even Rotary getting behind helping set some of those up or something. Yeah. Well, he's not here, so I'm happy to volunteer Terry Olds as a, a carpenter for, um, uh, I'd, I'd even, I'd even uh, turn some screws with him, but uh, <laughs> there's an opportunity there for, um, yeah. For, for good outreach on that. Yeah, that's actually a great project idea. Yeah. It's a period poverty is such a, it's just not talked about enough, unfortunately, and just the amount of money that is unfortunately spent on period products and for young ladies, I, I hate making it just so specific for young ladies because I try to keep it broad because anyone can truly have a menstrual cycle. But for young ladies that age 13 to like, 18 it's just so difficult for them in school to have to have these products and then going on their passing periods or the middle of class and so we're just trying to give that education to them that it's okay like this happens this is normal and to like I said just destigmatize the whole process behind this I'm kind of wondering uh since you brought all of this up um is there any sort of like you, you mentioned kind of education? Um, is, is there any sort of program where girls can come and just talk to someone? Because I remember like when I very first got my period when I was a young girl, like and I had parents that I could go to, but it was still really scary, like at the time. And I guess I wonder, would there be opportunities somewhere for young girls who maybe don't have a parent to turn to to, um, I don't know, get a little more than just the paper resource materials. Definitely. Yes. So Girls Inc. can provide that. We are actually having the pep rally people come. I believe it's in April, but we also want to maybe do like a monthly programming for this just because everyone's going to have to get it every so often anyways. But we are going to partner with pep rally so we can start getting that on our books as well. So yes, Girls Inc. can provide cool. that education. <laughs> Also, another question, um, is there any conversation around, uh, especially when you talk about period supplies, is there any conversation around like more environmentally friendly type products? Um, like I've never actually used them, but I've seen some underwear that are like washable mm -hmm. for that purpose. Yeah, we were actually just talking about that this week at our um, 
at work. But I think that would definitely be something to consider in the future for the period pantries, just because that that's definitely cost efficient and it helps out people that may not have a proper um, sanitary department to work with or whatnot. So I think it'd definitely be something to consider. Right. Well, do we have any other questions on this topic? I feel like, you know, what I'm really enjoying is, uh, Marissa, at least from my perspective, I can see the the rotary wheels turning here, no pun intended, um, <laughs> for, for some potential uh, pair up ideas. This really speaks to some of our mission statements and some things we've been working on in the past year. So um, it makes me happy. I'm, yeah, I'm really glad to have your uh, attention on this, and I'm more than a little jealous that you're you're swirling around the Wednesday club. But uh, you know, Thursdays at noon is great time to great time like to meet people too. as well. So. Yeah, Thursdays at noon has already done a period uh, project too. Yeah, yeah. we you know we've only laid we've already laid down a little bit of groundwork. I don't need Brian if Jessica's over your shoulder. I don't need her swooping in here and smacking my hand. So. <laughs> She's not. She's watching the kids while I'm on this. Which are after. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So well, what was the national organization? Because I was just searching as we were talking about this, and I found one called the period pantry project.org. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's the one you're working with or I believe that's the one, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, um, well, there's a lot of great opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really, really enjoying what we're hearing here. Um, I would definitely say as you figure out what these pantries would look like definitely come back and talk to the Rotary Clubs, certainly okay. ours, but probably all of them, because there may be ways we can help you either find locations or actually get funding to actually implement different ones, because, I mean, this is this is a perfect project for Rotary. Yeah. Um, Yay. Yeah. I don't know if it would be necessary, but I work for a cancer support community, and I'm some of the things that we do are like care packages for um, cancer patients. I know you, I think you guys focus mostly on young girls. Um, is there any, but you mentioned something about having more flexibility in age range. Mm -hmm. Can you yes. talk a little bit more about that? Definitely. So Girls Inc. as a whole, they focus on girls five to 18. Um, that's the ages that they focus on. But I mean, if there's education needs for a little bit younger than that or older than 18, we're not going to turn down anybody. Marissa, would you mind dropping your best contact information into uh, the chats? I sure can. That'd be great. So what do you see as your next steps on the period project, but also your next steps in general that you're trying to do with Girls Inc? Um, so with the period project, I definitely just want to see at least one pantry at the Girls Inc Center pop up. I think that would make my heart explode. I'd be so elated with that. Um, but if we can somehow incorporate that in a community setting, that would be even better. Um, but other goals for Girls Inc., there's a specific program called um, the Eureka program, and it focuses on girls entering eighth grade and it's a cohort model up until they graduate high school. And that basically shows them that there's so much there's so many opportunities besides college out there. Yes, we place emphasis on college, but those trades, just because trades are a like a very necessary skill that people need to have. And so, and also uh, creates like a boost of confidence for young ladies to see that they can do construction, they can do anything in STEAM and that they have somebody to look up to in that. So this cohort model takes them on field trips to these various construction sites and labs and all these other things in between to just give them that confidence that yes, women can be a part of these um, these occupations. So I would love to see Monroe County develop this program. I think that'd be absolutely amazing. Um, as far as what that looks like to get that, um, it's more so developing like a phone book list of like women in these various occupations so that we can connect the young ladies with them. Um, also funding, that's a big thing. Our great, our, <laughs> week one of our grant um, developer being here, I was like, hey, this is my dream. If you could somehow get money to do this, I would love you forever. So she's already having her wheels turn with that. Um, but definitely making a phone book of women in the various occupations that their women representation is very low. Well, in the, not, not to toot Wednesday's horn too much, but um, they have Melissa Stone, who is, who's, was the first um, social worker for the police department. Oh. Um, and she's absolutely wonderful if you've not met her yet. Um, I'll be happy to introduce you if Wednesday hasn't been doing that. Um, 
And then <clears throat> my sister is the associate dean of informatics. Um, oh, wow. And so if you're looking for people who want to inspire young girls to get into computer science and mm -hmm. stuff like that, she and other women she know would be great for that. Amazing. Uh, trying to think around. Feel free there's to shout a, out any others. There's a Bloomington Women in Leadership or Be Well group with the chamber you might be beneficial to connect with uh, in regards to that. Be Well group, okay. They have a upcoming um, event. Um, I think it's next week. Let me check my calendar real quick for you. Yeah, next Tuesday on the 8th over lunch. I don't know if you, I think the registration deadline passed, but if you reach out to them, they might might be able to share more information. Okay, thank you. I can throw it. I mean, the Women's Democratic Caucus in town, I think there's also just a Women League of Voters as well, but uh -huh. they are incredibly motivated people. And the local council of women. I don't know if that's the same thing as what you're talking about. And then I think you met her yesterday at um, the UADA meeting, but mm -hmm. Katie, Katie Broadfoot will be a strong person to work with. Okay. She's, she's the executive director over at Macom. Uh, she'll just be a strong contact for you also in town. Perfect. So the short of it is we have your back. Let us yes. know what you need. Um, yeah, and I think we'd be we'd be happy to to see this. Uh, yeah, see see those ideas come to fruition. I think there's a lot of parallel parallel goals there. So, yes. well, thank you all. I appreciate this so very much. And to give you a plug for the the I, Brian, do you know when the district the day of the district conference? It's a one day conference at the uh, the IMU, right? Yeah, give me just a second. I'll pull it up here. He's going to pull that up. And where I'm going with this is Marissa, you're you would prefer or are calling for rotary involvement in that as far as the day of service volunteer activism, right? And off the top of my head, that looks like maybe a couple shifts throughout the day of Rotarians coming in and stuffing stuffing backpacks or bags or, or pouches or just organizing materials um, and grouping materials. Pouches. Okay. Yes. We're trying to, I think we're still trying to coordinate what all is going on into the pouches. Um, where is what well, you think Saturday. they have it right here on this website? Saturday, April 9th. Yes, yeah, Saturday, April 9th is when it is. Okay, April. Saturday, April 9th. I'm sorry, I wanted to say April 19th, and I knew that was, I, I shouldn't say my mom, but Saturday, April 9th is an opportunity mm -hmm. um, to actually physically uh, volunteer to support this cause. And um, we've been talking, you know. Also if for some reason that gets canceled or goes online, the backup will be to have the three Bloomington clubs do it together without the okay. rest of the district. So it will still happen one way or another. If, if we can't meet in person, then we'll just coordinate our three clubs doing it. That's great. All right. Thanks, Gene. I appreciate you throwing that out. I'm only speaking at it and yet don't remember when it is. <laughs> All right. Well, I think, I think we've come to a natural place to conclude if, uh, if, Nobody has anything more to add to the conversation, but Marissa, thank you so much for your time today. Thank and you. yeah, I think you've you've certainly handed us a, a, a couple tasty ideas for some future grant writing opportunities that we might have, so. Perfect, well, thank you all so much. You're truly helping the young ladies of Monroe County, so we appreciate it. Very good. Well, and uh, the snow is now really coming down on my side of town. So you all stay inside and stay safe. Don't go out on the roads. It's not good out there. And we'll be in touch.